Hi, welcome to the Opto Electronic Organic Chemistry Lab. This is where we spent half of camp making our perovskite samples to then test at the photonic center, where we spent the other half of camp. Along the way, we learned about important lab safety and became exposed to different lab materials and techniques. We began preparing samples during the first week, which included cutting the substrates with a diamond tip cutter and then snapping it on the edge of the board to make 2.5 centimeter squares. The cleaning procedure involved placing the cut substrates into a beaker, covering them with various solutions, and then placing them into the ultrasonic cleanser for 15 minutes. Nice work, Andrew. Thanks, Fanny. After our first round of cleaning, it was time to rinse each substrate with our cleaning solutions and dry them off with a nitrogen gun. Now we're ready to spin coat. We used a micro pipette to spread the solution as evenly as possible. Then we set a program to spin at 1200 RPM for 45 seconds. After it finished, we took our sample out carefully and brought it over to the vacuum chamber. We placed our samples in the vacuum chamber to evaporate the solution and reduce the grain size of the perovskites, allowing for better consistency. After the vacuum chamber, we took the samples to the hot plate to evaporate any remaining solution. All testing for our perovskite samples was performed in the photonic center where the latter half of our week was spent. Built of state-of-the-art lab equipment, we were able to utilize these laser optic devices in order to test samples and collect data. And before laser testing, safety goggles were always a must. We used and precisely aligned a series of various optical lenses in order to properly magnify and focus our laser light onto the perovskites. We are then able to gather data and generate graphs from the light being emitted from our samples. Once the optical setup was ready and all safety personnel was put on, we would turn on the laser allowing the light to shine onto our samples. We began testing after turning the lights off to better measure our samples for the luminescence using a fiber optic. The light generated increase and decrease as the blade moved in steps during VSL testing, which allowed us to control the laser power on our sample. We then applied the same fabrication process by using an ITO substrate instead of glass to create single layer LEDs. We tested these under vacuum at a probe station to see how their luminance varied with voltage. Hopefully, this video has given you a glimpse into our journey these past six weeks. We've gained valuable research experience and unforgettable memories. Thank you!